Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video, as we are approaching Pokemon Day this week, I wanted to collect a bunch of my previous videos discussing Johto connections in recent Pokemon games. It is widely expected that we are going to see a brand new game announced on Pokemon Day this year at a Pokemon Presents, and the contenders for where we might be returning to with this new game are Johto and Unova. I have done a ton of videos discussing connections to the Johto region and the Kanto region in some of my recent stuff regarding Legends Arceus and Scarlet and Violet. So in today's video, I am going to combine a bunch of my previous stuff discussing Johto into one big mega video for you guys to enjoy and get hyped for Pokemon Day this week. So go get some popcorn, grab a snack and a drink, and let's jump right into things. There are so many reasons why I love the Sinnoh region and why I love Generation 4 as a whole. When it comes to fantasy media and fictional works, I love the lore and history that writers and designers give their worlds. Pokemon has an incredibly rich and ever-evolving lore to its world building, and Generation 4 in particular gave us so much in terms of historical background, uh, worship of gods and deities, creation of the world itself, a lot of this lore that is absolutely crucial to a deeper understanding of your fictional world, and they did it in spades. Legends Arceus was no different. It took a lot of the original stuff created by Game Freak in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum and just charged it up by a thousand. We got tons of new stuff and tons of new writings and musings from the people of the Hisui region about the land they were living on. Hisui is an interesting moment in Pokemon's history because we're seeing a region populated from the very beginning. We're learning a lot about the original people who populated the land, we're learning about how the transition to modern Sinnoh happens, and we're getting to see the clashing ideals between people who fear the land and people who live off the land. And in the world of Pokemon, part of living off the land is interacting with the flora and fauna of the land, and that is Pokemon. We see the Diamond Clan and the Pearl Clan share an intimate connection with the Pokemon who live on the land of Sui, whereas the Galaxy Expedition team and some of the people who are leading it are deeply apprehensive of connecting human and Pokemon. One of the things that we see throughout the game is this ancient people. In Old Verse 5, we see it say, quote, Long and longer yet ago, Celestica was here. Both folk and town alike both did disappear. In time came new folk sailing, sailing across the sea, called by their love of Sinnoh, great and almighty. But different were Sinnoh that each folk did hold dear, and bitter strife and anger war were always at the near. Celestica, they called themselves, the name not theirs to take, yet claim it from the past they did, for tragic quarrel's sake. So once again did our name live, through all our people gone, but even if the name endures, its heart does not live on. The Celestica people came before the Diamond and Pearl clans, but the Diamond and Pearl clans are ancestors of the Celestica people. But Celestica is not a name of theirs. It is a name even older than those people. One of the things speculated about from the community is where these people came from, and given the geography of the Pokemon world, it is fair to claim that they came from the south. Sinnoh is the northernmost point of the continent made up of Johto, Kanto, and Sinnoh. To the north of the Johto region, but to the south of the Sinnoh region, is an area of land, a mountainous area called Sinjo. We see the Sinjo ruins in Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. In there is a temple that Cynthia takes you to with an expedition explorer, expedition explorer, with an excavator where you get to use the Arceus brought from Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum to create a new egg of Dialga and Palkia. Some have speculated that Sinjo is where these people are from. They migrated further north and founded the Hisui region. These are the Celestica people. They probably called the area of what is now known Celestic Town to be home. There's so much here that it is really fun to dig into. One of the topics that it brings up is, well, why did they worship Sinnoh? And why does that worship of Sinnoh not permeate the modern world? 
And who are the original Celestica people? Is Celestica the name of Hisui even before it's called Hisui? Is Celestica the name of the continent at large or the name it used to be gone by? In some of the verses, as I read off before, and I wanted to read you the whole verse because I think it's it's very important for a lot of this lore, they talk about Celestica as not only being the people who call this land home, but also the name of the land itself. It's really interesting, and it's, it's interesting to see how the almost religious worship of the deity Sinnoh, which is, one would have to assume, Arceus, how this permeates not only the people who live here, but also the people who are now the ancestors. Given the lore behind the Celestica people, the connections to the Sinjo region, and the location of Hisui in relation to the rest of this continent, a lot of people are speculating that the next Legends game, if there is one, is going to be a Johto-centric game. Of course, Johto will probably have a different name. It'll probably be just the Johto region and not the Kanto region, unfortunately, because since Heart Gold and Soul Silver, Game Freak has really not wanted to return to previous regions in the same game. But if we do go back to the Johto region, it's going to be some interesting questions that will have to be answered. Sinnoh went by Hisui. What will Johto go by? If Johto and Sinnoh are both going by different names in their past, how does the region between the two eventually come to be known as Sinjo? Will they even address it? If they do address it, are we going to learn more about the Celestica people? This is all assuming, like I said before, that the next game in the Legends series is going to be based on Johto, that is, if we even get another Legends game at all. And of course, Johto is the region that we've visited the least frequently in the most recent period of time. It is the game that has yet to be remade the most recently, it is the generation that we've yet to explore very deeply in the last 10 or 15 years, and it is the game that came after the Sinnoh region. So if you're going to be remaking them, and also considering remakes in your list of games that need to be remade, then before Black and White and Black and White 2 can be remade, you're talking about Heart Gold and Soul Silver, which are already remakes. That sounded really confusing, but I hope it tracks. And I don't think they're going to remake a remake. I think they're going to give it the Legends treatment. A couple YouTubers have made videos on this in the last couple weeks, speculating about the potential of a Let's Go Johto, not a Let's Go Johto, a Legends Johto. And I do agree with them that it is likely. And it's going to be likely that we see more built upon the Celestica people. My personal theory I don't think the Celestica people are from the Johto region. I think the Celestica people are from Sinjo, the area between Johto and Sinnoh. These people are regionless, and they come to settle the Sinnoh region and eventually become the Diamond and Pearl clans, which translate to the modern world of Sinnoh. They are the first people to call Sinnoh home. There were Celestica people before them, but it's because they're the ones who came from previous regions. I did a video about this a couple months back, and I'll link it uh, in the card above right now if you want to learn a little bit more about Volo and Cynthia and their connections to the Celestica people. I think the topic is really interesting, and I would love to know what you guys think. Do you think we're going to learn more about the Celestica people in a future Legends game? Do you think we could see some writings or some verses talking about these people in a book somewhere in the Paldea region, considering it is bookended by Legends Arceus on one end? They do like to connect these games that are the ones that follow each other in the release cycle, at least a little bit. Sometimes hinting towards future games and other times calling back to the ones before it. So if we do see some mentions of the Johto region, the Sinnoh region, or the Hisui region, I would expect it to be related to that lore, but that's if we do get those callbacks. If we get hints towards the future, that kind of just goes out the window and we really don't have much to work with there. But I'd be interested to see if they continue to build on this and if they continue to build on it with another Legends game. So this has turned into a little bit of a series now. If you did not see my most recent video talking about the Celestica people, their connections to the Hisui region, the modern day Sinnoh, and of course Johto, which is going to be the topic of today's video, I will link it in a card in the corner. You can go check that out, but don't check that out before watching the rest of this video, unless you haven't seen it yet. In that case, go watch that one, 
then come back and watch this one. But the Johto region is one of the more ancient regions in the Pokemon world. There is a lot of lore from various parts of the Pokemon world, which talks about people migrating from Johto. We have speculated in previous videos about the Celestica people and about the people who inhabit Sinnoh as part of the Diamond and Pearl clan that they came from Johto. While I believe it is much more likely that they came from the mountainous region between Johto and Sinnoh in the modern times known as Sinjo, I think that Johto is also very much a possibility. Johto is also where many settlers of the Alola region came from. In some of the flavor text that we see in Pokemon Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, we hear about the settlers of various towns in the Alola region coming from regions such as Kanto and Johto. This could be because Alola is close to the Kanto and Johto regions. We see that Lily travels to the Kanto region at the end of those games, so you can surmise that these regions are decently close to one another. We also get Ash's Greninja in these games, and Ash's connections to Kanto are obvious. So to, the idea that Alola and other regions like it are close to Kanto and Johto is obvious. That also means, though, that they are close to the Sinnoh region. As I mentioned in the previous video, these three regions are all part of the same continent. In the real world, they all take inspiration from different geographic locations on the islands of Japan, so it makes sense that in-game, in the in-game canon, they are also close to one another. The Sinjo ruins are where the Celestic people are from, in my opinion, and I think that if and when we do get a Legends Johto game, I don't think it'll be called Legends Johto, but something similar, I think we're going to see more writings of ancient peoples of the region, whatever the Johto region is called in ancient times, talking about where their descendants are from. And if I had to do a little speculation, putting on my, my, my tinfoil hat for a moment and getting a little all conspiracy on everybody, I would have to imagine that the people of Johto and then eventually the people who migrated into the Kanto region are also from Sinjo. What we've seen in Sinjo is more ancient than anything else in the Pokemon world up to this point. We do have ancient ruins in the Johto region, namely the ruins of Alf. The people's connection to Unknown is obvious in those games. Unknown makes up the fabric of the Johto region. The ability to catch all of the letters of the Unknown started in Generation 2. So there are ancient locations in the Johto region. But the temple dedicated to Arceus and dedicated to the trio that Arceus gives off, Diaga, Palhia, and Giratina, is located in Sinjo. Maybe Sinjo shares relations between these two regions. The people of Sinjo migrated north and eventually became the Diamond and Pearl Clan and the people who inhabit Celestic Town in modern day Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. But maybe a group of those people also went south into the Johto region, discovered new information about the unknown and the unknown's connection to Arceus, which is something that the Pokemon community has speculated upon for years and years, going back to the third Pokemon movie. Movie. Maybe all of these people are one in the same, and maybe this hint at more lore for the Celestica people is a hint at future Legends games. I think the Celestica people and their existence in Sinjo is a hint at future Legends games. I am very confident, as are many Poketubers who have made videos about this in the recent months, that the Legends franchise under the Pokemon franchise is one that is going to continue. I don't think it's just a test like Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee were by Game Freak to test out the Switch hardware for their eventual Generation 8 games, Sword and Shield. I think this is a different beast, and I think the joke Johto region, while some might say the Unova region being next in line is more likely, Johto is a prime candidate to return to. I don't think it'll be called Johto. I think they'll continue to take the tradition from Legends Arceus and apply it to these previous regions. And I think you can get away with it with the speculation that the original inhabitants of the Johto region also came from Sinjo. It was known by a different name. They didn't always live here. I think in an ancient Johto, there could be a lot of things that we could explore. Will we see the Kanto region accessible? I'm not entirely sure. Will the ruins of Alf be in their prime? How old are the ruins of Alf? It's a question that I think Legends Johto, which I'm going to call it for now, could answer. What will Celebi's role be in Legends Johto? Celebi is really the mascot Pokemon for Generation 2 to go along with Lugia, Ho-Oh, and Suicune. 
I think we could see a Legends game centered around Celebi and its time traveling antics. Maybe Celebi is traveling through time is part of the connection to the people who eventually settled the Johto region. I think there's a lot of information we could learn about the unknown and some callbacks that Legends Johto could make through the unknown to Arceus and its presence in Legends Arceus. There's a lot they could do with the lore of the Johto region. We could learn about a time before the beasts, before the burned tower, and before Ho-Oh revived three Pokemon into Suicune, Entei, and Raikou. There are so many different things that they could hit on in a Legends Johto game, and they could still continue to plant the seeds of the origin of man in the Pokemon world. The Celestica people and the people who migrated from Sinnoh into the, the people who migrated from Sinjo into the Johto region are our earliest known humans in the Pokemon world and so much of their speculation as to how they migrated through this mountainous region is fascinating. Some of the fact that the people who live in the Galaxy Expedition Village, Jubilife Village, in Pokemon Legends Arceus come from the sea is also interesting because the accessibility of the region is something that creates some interesting discussion points around Sinnoh. Will those same discussion points exist around Johto? If people were migrating south into the Johto region, they would have to come across certain geographic landmarks such as the Lake of Rage. This is a lake that had does not have shiny, uh, shiny Gyarados. Shiny Gyarados was created through the radio waves being messed with by Team Rocket in modern times. This whole environment could look very different. Maybe there's people already in the Johto region that date back further than the Sinjo people. Maybe the Sinjo people are not the original settlers, and you get to see the dynamic unfold between the people of Sinjo and the people who originally call this land home, their traditions, their beliefs, their structures of worship of Ho-Oh and Lugia. All of this could predate these people. There's a lot of different avenues they could go down with a future Legends Johto game, a lot of lore they could explore. I know I pushed off the idea of Kanto in a previous point in this video, but I want to go back to it here. If I was the devs, I would include the Kanto region. I would include a deeply underdeveloped part of the world. I think Kanto is less developed at this point than the Johto region because of its geographic location and because of how you travel between Kanto and Johto and its location privy to Sinjo. I think you're traveling south into Sino, into Johto, and then traveling into Kanto. If that's the case, I think it should be an even more wild region of the world, one that humans have barely even touched. The powers of Moltres, Zapdos, and Articuno are unquenched. They're not dwelling in their lairs. They're out and roaming the world. So much of Kanto and Johto's lore could be incredible to explore in an ancient part of history. And I think Legends Johto and its connections to Legends Arceus could be those big hints to the future of Pokemon games we're going to experience. I just want to put it out there from the start that I don't think we're getting the next generation in 2024. I think the timeline is too soon. I think for many reasons, the anime is not where it needs to be to end at some point next year. I just don't see a world, especially in the marketing cycle of Pokemon, where we get the region following Paldea next year. I also don't think that we're going to get a traditional remake. I don't think it's time for black and white remakes. I don't think it's time for Black and White 3, although that would be very exciting. And to be perfectly honest, of all of the things that I think we're going to get next year, if Game Freak decided to say, screw everything we've ever done, here's Black and White 3, 3D, as if the Unova world just kept turning after Black and White 2, that would be incredible. Please do it. I don't think we're going to get that. I don't think we're returning to Unova next year. I think it's too soon. I don't think it lines up with anything that Game Freak might be doing. A lot of people have speculated, and I want to get this out of the way now because there's people who have made much better in-depth videos on the subject. Johto is the region we have visited the furthest from now. It is the region we haven't been to in the longest. We've gotten Kanto rema re remakes recently with Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, so we've seen the Kanto region. We've gotten Sinnoh remakes twice over with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl and Legends Arceus. We 
the next game is Heart Gold and Soul Silver. In the timeline of Pokemon games that have come out chronologically, that is the most recent time we've been to Johto. And of all the regions before Unova and before what comes after that, it's the region we haven't visited the longest. I think there's a very good chance. I think probably the most likely chance that we are going to return to the Johto region in some form next year. I don't think it's Let's Go. I've said this ad nauseum. I don't think we're ever getting another Let's Go game again. Check out some of my older videos if you want my more in-depth thoughts on why, because that would take like five minutes out of this video. I don't think we're getting a BDSP style remake of Heart Gold and Soul Silver. I, I just don't see them dipping back into that well right now. Could Ilka develop another game in that style in the future? A, an unfortunate black and white remake in that style instead of something grander? Possibly. Maybe down the line. I don't think that's what we're going to get either. I think it makes all the sense in the world to give us a Johto game based on the Legends formula next year. I think it makes sense not only to give us a Legends Johto game of some kind, whether it's a Legends Celebi, a Legends Ho-Oh, something to that effect, but I also think it makes a ton of sense for that game to come out earlier in the calendar year. They have the Legends core gameplay already. Game Freak has it. They can make an asset reusing game using the Legends formula to give us a brand new Legends game in a shorter turnaround. Giving us the Johto region is ideal because it connects a lot, first of all, to the lore of the Sinnoh region, and they could continue to tell some of the historical threads that they started pulling in Legends Arceus in a Legends Johto game. They have the assets to bring this out to us at a convenient time and if they bring it out to us early enough in the year not an october november release they can also then give us dlc for a legends johto game at the end of next year if we get dlc for a legends johto game at the end of next year that then brings us to 2025 and before going any further i understand that this is like i'm looking at a pegboard or a cork board, and I'm connecting strings and trying to make a conspiracy. I understand that's what this video is, but this is where my head has been going for like three weeks now. If that all happens, we get a Legends Johto game early-ish in 2024 that gets announced on Pokemon Day, of course. We get DLC, an expansion pass, whatever it might be for said Legends Johto game at the end of 2024. That lines us up perfectly for 2025, the 30th anniversary of the Pokemon franchise, where we will no doubt get the next generation of Pokemon, most likely on the next Nintendo console. By that point, I think we will be into Nintendo's next console, whether it's just coming out or a couple months from release. And by the time that game comes out, it will be fall of 2025 and people will have their systems and they will be ready for a brand new generation of Pokemon. They want to celebrate an anniversary with a brand new generation. They've done it in the past. This lines up perfectly. Now, the topic of the video that I'm getting into halfway through. Going with all of this being true, if we get a Legends Johto game, I think it is an excellent opportunity to pull on some of my most interesting threads in the Pokemon franchise. I talked about the connections to the Sinnoh region earlier, and I think this is where a DLC needs to go. Johto and not Kanto will be explored in the core game of a Legends Johto game, and there will be a bevy of videos talking about how they are taking something that we've had previously, which is access to the Kanto region in a Johto game, and removing it, and this is a sign that modern Game Freak doesn't care about Pokemon and doesn't, doesn't doesn't really want to give their players a $60 experience, blah, 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 blah. That will happen. I don't really care right now. When we get DLC, we're also not going to go back to the Kanto region. Not at all. We're going to head north. We're going to head north to the land that exists between the ancient Hisui region and whatever Johto was called it back in the day, because we'll get a different region name for it, most likely. It will be the Sinjo region. It will be how Sinnoh is eventually named. It will be where we learn more about the Sinjo ruins, about the events that took place in Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, bringing Arceus to the Sinjo ruins and creating an egg of one of the gods of time, space, and distortion. It will pull on threads of Cynthia's lore and ancestry, how the people of the Johto region eventually migrated into Hisui, the Hisuian people, 
how those people are the ancient ancestors of said people who migrated north, how the Sinjo area came to be and how it was civilized, some of the notes and pieces of lore that we get from Kogita and across the Hisui region in Legends Arceus can be explored and continued to be built upon. It can be a prequel of sorts to Legends Arceus because whatever happens in this game is, at least in my mind, going to take place before the events of Pokemon Legends Arceus. So if we're building a timeline of ancient Pokemon, this is where it will be explored. And when we get this DLC, when we get what I thought we would end up getting in Pokemon Legends Arceus, to this day, I'm stunned that we did not get DLC for that game, that we jumped right into a new generation. We got a free update that was slightly sizable, but that was it. I think this is where we get it, because again, it is an asset reusing sequel. They have the time not only to build a brand new game using this engine, just like with Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, although it won't be as substantial, because of course it's not, it's Pokemon, it's not Zelda. It will also give them the ability to work on DLC, fill up an entire year and then set us up for the following year. And when we explore the Hisui region's southern tip, which is Sinjo, Johto's northern tip, this mountain range that connects these two regions, we're going to get an exploration of the lore of what Arceus has to do with this region, why the people of Sinjo built this ancient temple and this ancient place to worship Arceus, and why it is able to harness the power of creation and give us the egg for Dialga Palkia and Garatina. It can pull on threads from Heart Gold and Soul Silver and can be a callback to Heart Gold and Soul Silver without having to be a brand new remake. This is what Legends Arceus was. It was a callback to Pokemon Platinum. Uh, Taco, who's on Twitter and has a YouTube channel, did a great video diving into Legends Arceus and the lore of Legends Arceus and how it is a remake of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, although not a remake in the way you would think. Uh, it's a tremendous video, and I think this game, this Legends Johto game, is going to do more of the same, and its DLC will be the biggest part of the game, at least to lore junkies like me, people who love absolutely nerding out and dissecting all of the things that Pokemon does quietly. It's soft world building through through uh, books in different towns and buildings, things that you don't have to see on your adventure, but if you do see, give you a better perspective. And returning to the Sinjo region, learning about the connections Kogita talks to us about in Legends Arceus, and seeing how that history reflects upon Johto is exactly what a DLC for a Legends Johto game could be. Legends Johto will focus on the lore of the Johto region, Ho-Oh and Lugia, the tower, uh, the, the Pokemon that were created from the fire, whether it's Celebi and time travel, that's where the focus will be. But the DLC will give us our connections to Legends Arceus, will give us our callbacks to Heart Gold and Soul Silver's event with Arceus. It is the best way for Game Freak to honor that game while not making a direct remake and also taking us back to Johto in the process. So those are my thoughts on what a DLC for a Legends Johto game could be. What do you think of my ideas? Let me know down in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this speculative style video, be sure to hit that subscribe button because I want to do more of them like it in the future. I know it's a little off the beaten path. I hope you all enjoyed. I will talk to you soon. I've been Linky and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.